support, as I mentioned earlier. Another sort of a, a, a fly in the ointment for the markets of late has been uh, Facebook uh, right now getting closely scrutinized by the government. Everyone and his proverbial uncle in Washington wants to talk to Mark Zuckerberg. And in fact, he's going to be a busy fellow because in the next couple of weeks, he could be popping in and around town, uh, meeting with a variety of committees, including the FTC now that is uh, sort of uh, looking at uh, the overall operations of Facebook. And you know what that can mean. But that stock, which had careened about 14% over the last or roughly 10 t trading days or so, uh, inched up today. Now, whether that means a turnaround is in the offing and that the selling has stopped, uh, it's a little bit premature to say that, but that too was a constructive development that few people saw coming, uh, certainly for a stock that has uh, lost about $100 billion in market value. With us now, Melissa Armo and Lenore Hawkins. Uh, Lenore, any with you, begin with you. What's real? What happened last week or what happened today? I think both, because the market's just really confused. When you have a lot of policy coming through via Twitter, people get a little nervous. We're not really clear how this is all going to pan out. We have a very different administration that the world than, than we've ever experienced before. And we also have a new sheriff in town at the Federal Reserve, and people aren't really sure how that's going to pan out, because he is definitely very different than either Bernanke or Dan Yellen. So the market's just trying to figure it out. All right. Now, others have said the president's crazy like a fox, Melissa, and that he got the desired concessions out of the Chinese without them being formally outlined, whatever. The market seemed to like today in the sign that China might be not capitulating, but rethinking things. Um, where do you stand? Well, I definitely think that there's a method to Trump's madness. I mean, look at even with North Korea. He calls the North Korean dictator rocket man, and all of a sudden now he's going to meet with him. He threatens to put on these tariffs for steel, and then all of a sudden they're talking about sitting down to renegotiate NAFTA with Canada and Mexico. Now he's saying about the tariffs with China, putting $60 billion on, and all of a sudden now South Korea is talking to him. So he, there's a method to his madness. It's working. It's effective. Even though we had the sell-off last week, again, we're still in a bullish trend in the market. Do you buy, Lenore, that some of those trade tensions could be easing, though, that whatever we come up with here, given the South Koreans are making some concessions to avoid getting slapped with steel tariffs of their own and some of these other issues, that it is having the desired effect? Now, obviously, the proof is in the pudding. Countries following up on commitments they make, but your thoughts? I think that it does look like this is going to be potentially effective to a degree, but what I'm worried about is that for years, U.S. trade policy has been about more than just dollars and cents. It has been a way for the U.S. to expand its influence around the world. And at a time where China is really looking to grow its influence and expand its base, the United States is somewhat withdrawing and becoming more isolated when it comes to these kinds of trade barriers. And in many cases, some of this stuff hurts our closest allies more than anyone else. You know, it's funny, Melissa, when you, I flip around and watch and see the other news channels and business channels, because that's what I do. <laughs> and I'm telling you, there, 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 there's a, a, a certain fixation on a, a, a certain form of porn star and what she said in an interview. Uh, then the craziness in the White House and people coming and going with abandon. Uh, the, we now have a, you know, a more hard line cabinet uh, that's going to be, when it comes to foreign policy, the most militaristic ever, and that this is frightening the you-know-what out of everybody else. And then I see what happened on Wall Street today. What, 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 what's going on? Right. All that stuff is crap. I don't want to hear about my president's sex life. I really do not care. I want him to run the country well, and I think that so far he's doing a good job, and you got to let him do a good job. These people are going to keep attacking him. It's not going to go away. It's going to continue, and it has affected the market. And like I said before, that's unfortunate. However, in the long term, business people really see the benefits of some of the things that Trump's doing, and that's probably one of the reasons why the market picked itself up today and rallied. And the, whether we follow through or not, I don't know. But I will say one thing. I don't think the volatility is over. I still think we're going right. to go up and down and go up and down for a while. All right. I'm glad the camera was off me when you said the sex life thing, because I was going, la, 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 la. <laughs> All right. Ladies, I want to thank you both very, very much. But I tell you, to their point, if that was supposed to sort of unhinge stocks, it had a funny way of doing it. Just the opposite. Uh, Kevin Cork at the White